friends, my name is Kayla Rain, and today I'm doing the standalone book tag created by Harriet Rosie. She tagged me when she made this video and I really wanted to do this and I thought the perfect time to do it would be January. That way there are plenty of recommendations or just discussions around standalone books for people to add to their list throughout the year. I know I personally love a good standalone, especially if I'm entrenched in a bunch of different series and I just want a completed story all put together in one and I just want to like feel that satisfaction of like starting the story and finishing it all within the same binding. Like standalones are amazing for that. Don't get me wrong, I love a good series, but sometimes I'm just craving a single book that completes the story and everything. So there are 10 questions here that I'm going to jump right into starting with. What is your favorite standalone? And for me, I personally love Far From You by Tess Sharp. This is such an incredible standalone. It is like a thriller mystery in the YA world and it follows a main character who gets out of rehab and has to track down a murderer and clear her name and it is so amazing. I love the story arc. I love the characters. I like that there was a bit of history within the book of the characters um, so it just really beefed it up and made it feel like such a satisfying standalone so that hands down one of my favorite standalones ever and I definitely wanted to mention it in this video number two is what is your least favorite standalone and this one was easy that is Soundless by Rochelle Mead I did not enjoy that standalone at all it is a fantasy and I just didn't feel like the world building was all that great. I didn't really like the plot overall. The characters I didn't get very attached to, which is like a major thing for me in standalones. Like even if I'm not expecting to see those characters again, like I, I still want to get attached to them. I still want to feel like I'm kind of going through that story with them as I'm reading a book. And I just didn't get that with this novel. So least favorite is definitely Soundless by Rochelle Mead. Number three is what is a standalone that you wish was a series? And I really, really wish that A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis was a full series because the main character in the book, Grace, is able to solve mysteries and I just feel like that would make such an amazing series. Like she is such an incredible character and I really liked the storyline in that book and like just the way that she was able to kind of reclaim her strength and not in the strong female character like super buff and masculine traits or anything like that. but. Just the way that she developed over the course of the novel was amazing and I would love to see that in the series with her kicking butt and solving mysteries and just being amazing and continuing that growth from the first book. But it's a standalone so, you know. Number four is what is a series that you wish was a standalone and I think that a lot of people will agree with me here and while I didn't hate the second and the third installment of this series, I didn't really feel that the they were necessary. And that is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I feel like this totally could be a standalone. It does not have to have a continuation of the two companion novels. They're completely unnecessary. And while I enjoyed them and thought they were pretty fun, they weren't anywhere near the original book. And it's just, like I said, it wasn't really necessary. Number five, what is an emotional standalone? And definitely All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Keeley. This standalone had an entire range of emotions for me. I was angry, I was really sad. I also felt like there were a lot of really happy, beautiful moments throughout and then some really empowering moments, especially the very last scene of the book was so well done. This book is going to take you on a range of emotions. I wouldn't necessarily say like every single emotion is gonna be hit along the way, but I can guarantee that you're going to be really pissed off and really sad throughout the course of this novel. Number six is what is a standalone with really good world building and I have to say The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I really loved the world building in this book. I thought that it did such a good job of setting up the world of the cold town outside of the regular towns which is cold towns are where vampires live in the real world and it was so fantastically done. I really, really enjoyed it and I felt like the world building was so well put together for a standalone that I just felt like I wasn't, I didn't have like a lot of questions. 
Although I would love to see how other cold towns work, like that would be awesome. I felt like the actual cold town within that novel was just very well established. Number seven is what is a standalone with well-developed characters, and I have to say I'll Meet You There by Heather Demetrios. I really enjoyed this standalone, and I really liked the character development along the way, as well as the character setbacks. When you have character development, I think it's important to recognize that sometimes when someone moves forward they can also take a few steps back and this book really did that and did it well and I enjoyed that especially with the main character and her mother that relationship was really heartbreaking but enjoyable to read. Number eight is what is a standalone with really great writing style and that is definitely When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. This book was so beautiful to read. The writing is just very lyrical and well put together and it just everything about it just feels whimsical because of the way that it's written. Even the darker parts it's just so gorgeous to read. Number nine is what is a standalone that really stuck with you and definitely Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This is a standalone that I'm still thinking about. It's not a very big book like it does not take very long to read this book because it's tiny it's like under 300 pages I think but it has really stuck with me I still think about this um, and I still think about the characters and the way that everything was written and the outcomes for the characters it was so well done and it is definitely one of the most impactful books I have read in 2017 and one of the most impactful books that I have read ever like flatline for sure and finally, question number 10 is what is a standalone that you would like to reread? And that is definitely Midnight at the Electric by Jodi Lynn Anderson. This is one that I think would be really fun to reread because when you go into it, it's not necessarily a mystery, but there's a lot that's mysterious about the novel. And I think it would be interesting to reread it knowing what I know now. It has three different storylines that in some way or another weave together and I think that that would be so fun to go back and read that and kind of pick up on things that I definitely missed the first time through because I didn't really know how everything was going to come together but now I do so I think that would be really fantastic. I haven't done a tag in a while but I do enjoy putting them together. The reason I stopped a while ago is I felt like I was just giving the same answers over and over again so I thought that it would be fun to kind of jump back in because I've read some new books. I feel like I have some new answers for all of the questions and I would like to start doing them again. As far as who I will tag, I would like to tag anyone who has a January birthday. So if you have a January birthday and you're watching this and you want to do this, you're officially tagged. But to be honest, if you want to do this, you can do it anyway. That's not a big deal at all. I can't really tell you what to do. I'll leave links in the down bar below for my other social media sites such as Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter, and y'all should totally check me out on there. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay weird.